We're looking at ecology today and we're going to talk about tropic levels. Each level in a food chain or food web is called a tropic level. Producers are always the first tropic level and this is how energy enters the ecosystem. And then herbivores, the things that eat producers like a rabbit or a deer, would be the second trophic level. Carnivores or omnivores would be at the next level and they will make up um, the remaining trophic levels. Each level depends on the one before it for energy. So for example, thistle would be an example of a producer, it's a plant, and so it's the first trophic level. And 99% of all organic matter is at this level. Herbivores are the second energy level. Here's the third trophic level and here's the fourth trophic level. So each preceding one is the next one up. Here's the confusing thing about this though. This is the, the secondary consumers are in the third trophic level. And so the confusing thing here is that the primary consumers are in the second trophic level and the secondary consumers are in the third trophic level. So it's kind of weird because the primary consumers are in the, why is it going backwards? are in the second energy level. And then the secondary consumers are in the third trophic level. So anyway, that's a little bit odd. Okay, so we usually represent trophic levels in ecological pyramids. So there are three types. And an ecological pyramid is a representation of the relative amount of each of energy or sometimes of matter at each trophic level. So I'm going to give you some examples. There can be energy pyramids, or biomass pyramids, or pyramids of numbers. And I'm going to show you examples of all three. So an energy pyramid shows the transfer of energy in an ecosystem. And so here's an example. If you look at a pyramid, the base is really, really big. And so this is going to represent the producers. So if you were putting in amount of energy, let's just say whatever energy they catch, we're going to call that 100%. It's not certainly not all of the energy that hits the sun, that hits the earth, but let's just say when, let's just call this our baseline at 100%. The next level is going to be the first level consumers, so this will be things like herbivores, like rabbits and deer. And if you look at the zeros, there's one less zero here. So only about 10% of the energy makes it to that first trophic level. And you lose a lot of that energy here as heat. And then if you take a zero off, you just get 1%. So this second level, so these would be maybe the wolves that eat the deer that ate the grass. This would be um, second level consumers, and they only have 1% of the energy. And then the tertiary level consumers are 0.1. So this might be a hawk that's eating, um, I don't know, um, a mole that ate a grasshopper that ate producers, something like that. So energy pyramids show the amount of available energy and it decreases for the higher consumers. So it, in other words, the important thing here is that it takes a large number of producers to support a small number of primary consumers. So if you look at the number of lions that you can have on a prairie, there are going to be way fewer lions or in, well, way fewer lions and other um, carnivores than there would be herbivores. And there'll be way fewer herbivores than there would be producers. So you have way more energy at this level. So you have producers followed by the herbivores, the first order consumers, and the second order consumers, and the third order consumers. And if you look at tropic levels, here's your first tropic level, your second tropic level, your third, and your fourth. And so the crazy thing here is the second tropic level is the first order consumer. Energy flow pyramid, the 10% rule. This says that the energy at each trophic level decreases by about um, 90%. You only get 10% at each continuing level up. So the producers maybe have um, 10,000 kilocals per meter square um, per yard. Um, and then you just take off a zero. So if you take off that zero, you've got 1,000. So you only have about 1,000 kilocalories um, in biomass here, and then about 100 kilocalories at this next level. And then for the guys who eat these, there's only about 10 kilocalories. So it's showing you the base is really big, and it gets smaller each time you go up. So there's not a lot of energy in organisms by the time you get here. Um, it's all concentrated in very few organisms. So you have way fewer snakes than you do um, mice and way fewer mice than you do grasshoppers and way fewer grasshoppers than you do plants. The next is a biomass pyramid which is almost the same thing and so this is living mass, The if you want the weight um, or the amount of stuff that you have. So 
this is um, grain, so again it would be the 10% rule. You've got um, 1,500 grams of grain, and you take off a zero, and so this is more or less. 10% um, of that would be the grams of chicken, and then here are the grams of human tissue that can live off of the chickens that have eaten the grain. And so you keep getting smaller and smaller as you go up, because at each level you lose a whole bunch of the energy as heat, or as producing um, energy to just to walk around and all the stuff that they do. So the biomass um, is the mass, or as long as you're on this planet, um, the weight of the organisms at that level. You can feed more people with plants grown in a certain area than with the animals that eat the plants. So here's an example of that. If you have a bunch of corn and you feed a bunch of people the corn, you can have this many people, but if you feed cows instead with the corn and then the people eat the cows, you're going to be able to feed way fewer um, people that way. So if you have a planet with a lot of people on it, it's better if the people eat here. The last one is the pyramid of numbers, and this generally looks just like the other two pyramids. So there are usually more producers than there are herbivores, and usually more herbivores than carnivores, and usually more of the first level carnivores here than the next. But you don't always get that. In some cases, the pyramid of numbers doesn't really look like a pyramid. So for example, if you look at an oak tree, that would be one tree. And if you look at all the bugs that are in the tree, there would actually be more bugs if you counted them all up. And then if you look at woodpeckers, this tree might actually be able to support a couple of woodpeckers. So you might get a bigger number here. So typically, our pyramids really do look like pyramids, but occasionally um, they don't. And that's it for this.